new day off. Instead, I hear a scream and I'm slapped afterward. Watch, oh my, oh, whoa. Oh. Watch where you're touching. Hey, welcome back to Willie J Gaming. I'm Willie J, and today we are playing day four of Doki Doki Literature Club, a brand new day. And I am so really excited to play new episodes of this every single day. So without further ado, let's go right into day four of Doki Doki Literature Club, a brand new day. I wake up to my alarm. I try to grab the alarm to turn it off. Instead, I hear a scream, and I'm slapped afterward. Watch, oh my, oh, whoa. Oh. Watch where you're touching. Sayori, it, it was an accident. I look at the clock. At least we're both up on time. You can use my parents' room, okay, Sayori? They have a spare shower. If you peep, you're dead. I got it, I got it. I shower and get ready for school. I head downstairs to the kitchen and make Sayori some breakfast. I make some omelets and fresh, and fresh crepes. Well, you do know how to cook. Like I said, if you have the time, you can learn a lot from YouTube. My parents haven't been home lately, so, I, so I've had t time to practice. When have my parents been home? When's the last time I've seen them? I've got bored of ordering food, so I had to do something. We both finish and start hanging out to school. I feel like another great day coming ahead. We're walking to school. Sierra gets to call on her cell phone. Hello, Mom? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. No, he didn't do anything to me. Sierra turns her head and sticks her tongue at me. Taking me up after class? Why? Doctor's appointment, but I'm not sick. Okay, okay, I'll wait for you after class. Love you, Mom. Bye! I got a text on my phone. It's a message from Sayori's mom thanking me for watching over their daughter. They, they're letting me know they're kicking her up after class to take her to the hospital to get screened for depression. Can you really get screened for depression? Determination flows into my heart. I get maybe you can. You probably can. I hold on to Sayori's hand and run to school. What were you think you're doing? We ran to school as Sayori gets flustered. Well, classes are finished, and I walk Sayori out to her parents. I gave her a big hug and kiss on her forehead. I let her know if she needed anything to call and that I'm there for her. Here I am back in the class. I guess I'm the first one. I wanted to talk to Monica today, but I guess she's still practicing the piano. I can't wait to hear her play. I bet it sounds nice. Hm. It's not long before Nazi comes up to me, to me expectantly. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. I kept my promise. I'm sorry I missed you yesterday. But we did. But it gave me great time to reread again. I read the first. I pulled the first volume out of Parfait Girls out of my bag. Natsuki takes it from my hands and quickly turns it over, presumably to check for wrinkles. Hey, I'm not that careless. I handle manga all the time, you know. I know I'm gonna mess up someone else's treasure. I just wanted to make sure. Can you blame me for being paranoid? I don't give people my manga every day, you know. That's true. I don't blame you. Well, anyway, let me put this one back. I'm gonna get the next one, okay? Natsuki makes her way out of the closet. I follow. So you're gonna tell me everything you thought, right? Where did this volume leave off again? I forgot. Oh, the chapter ended when Minori and Alice found- What the heck, Monica? Natsuki's voice resonates from inside the closet. Eh? I peer inside. All of Natsuki's books are lined up on the top shelf. Uh-oh. Did you move my manga again? Oh, sorry, sorry. The teacher got mad at me for taking up too much space in the closet, so I had to move some stuff around a little bit. It's all still there. I just had to organize a bit. Ugh! The top shelf is far above Natsuki's head. She makes a futile hop trying to figure out how to reach her manga. Jeez, this is so inconvenient. I'm moving all of these back down. There's plenty of room on top shelves, and besides, they're really pretty to look at when they're all lined up. Why would you waste out on the top shelf? Uh, Natsuki, there's a stool on the wall there. In the closet, there's a collapsible stool that's hanging on the wall. If you want, I can reach up there and hand them to you. I can get them myself. Natsuki grabs the stool from the wall and unfolds it. You think I'm too short or something? No, I just wanted to help, that's all. I'm not judging you on being vertical. <laughs> I'm being vertically challenged. Yeah, that's the word. I knew it. Well, you know what? Just watch me. Natsuki hops onto the stool, which ends up being a little wobbly because of its collapsible design. Uh -huh. Be careful. I know what I'm doing. Standing on the stool, Natsuki's fingertips reach the top shelf. The stool will be enough for me to easily grab the books, but Natsuki's being stubborn as usual. Uh -huh. Natsuki uses her fingers to scoot one of the smaller box to the edge of the shelf. See? The box suddenly tips. Natsuki barely catches it before it falls to the floor. The stool wobbles. Oh my! Losing balance, Natsuki hops off the stool. Thankfully, she was able to stay on her feet. She holds the box triumphantly. There! Having almost fell, Natsuki is a bit shaken up. She's no need to prove yourself to me. There's no way you'll be able to get the bigger boxes like that. I can reach them, so just I said I can do it! I don't want your help, okay? <sighs> I'm gonna go get a chair, so just hang on. Natsuki forces her way past me out of the closet. 
Let's see. The classroom chairs have the desk attached, so they're too inconvenient to fit into the closet. Aha! Now she trots over to the teacher's desk, which has a computer chair behind it. She rolls it on its wheels, back over to the closet. Ah, it's a little dangerous since the chair swivels and rolls. But I've already learned my lesson, so I keep my mouth shut. Oh, sh now she climbs onto the chair, then slowly balances on her feet. She ref since she refuses my help, I take a seat with my back against the side of the doorway and simply watch. Oh, there we go! See, I can easily do it now! I haven't seen that in a real game. Maybe that's new art. Natsuki grabs a stack of manga and puts it on the shelf below. Ah! The chair swivels. Natsuki catches herself on the shelf. What are you doing? Can you at least hold the chair steadily instead of sitting and doing nothing? Who is it that told me not to help? Yeah, yeah, I got you. I hold the chair while Natsuki reaches back up. <laughs> I can't. I can almost see it for what? No. Hmm. I force myself to turn away. Natsuki seriously didn't think this through, did she? Once she realizes I'll be dead. <laughs> Natsuki wraps her arms around the Parfait Girl's box set, easily one of the largest on the shelf. Uh, heavy. He will. I, I don't think I can bend down without falling. Hurry and take this one. Eh? But then I have to let go of the chair and you'll fall. That's fine. Just for a second. Hurry up. Seriously? If you say so, let me just stand up. I slowly release my grip from the chair. I regret this decision. What do you mean stand up? Natsuki looks down at me. Why are you all the way back? Eh? Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, Natsuki realized, looks like she just realized something about she'll lose her balance if she moves. Natsuki, the boss, what are you looking at? Oh no! What do you think? It's not like I can look away now. Can You're trying to look at my, 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 Natsuki's legs shake. I'm not, it's just there. Natsuki, don't try to move, just give me the box. You pervert! You set me up! Go away, get out! How did I set you up? You set me up, I should call calling you that. I'll do it myself. Ah! The chair suddenly swivels beneath Natsuki's feet. Natsuki! Yeah! The scene turns into chaos for a split second. The chair files from under, flies from under Natsuki's feet. Frantically, I try to catch her. The box topples out of her hands and the books go flying. I got you. The full force of Natsuki's body against me throws me to the ground. A whole bunch of books pelt me in the face. Natsuki tries to shield herself with her own arms as her face lands straight on my chest. My right arm and my back seriously felt the impact. Slowly, Natsuki comes to her senses. She presses her arm straight into me to prop herself up. Eh? Natsuki seems to realize it's not the floor that's beneath her. Ugh. Gross, gross! A fist pounds into my chest. Natsuki hoists herself to her feet. What were you thinking? You sicko! I try to catch my breath after being punched. Everything okay over there? I heard a loud noise. Monica suddenly appears and, Maya, do you have to put the manga on the top shelf? Are you trying to kill your club members or something? Gee. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. It seems like your most recent club members are total perverts, so I hope you're happy. Takes one to know one. <laughs> Somehow, it's impossible for me to explain this whole bizarre situation to Monica. Monica trusts me. I know, I know, don't worry. Monica says that quietly to me. Looks like I'm off the hook. Oh no, my, my, huh? I look down. Natsuki's kneeling on the floor, holding one of the books that are scattered all over. There's a large diagonal crease on paste she's trying to smooth out. Oh, it must have landed on the page. Natsuki tries a bit more to fix grease, but she can't give it out. Then she slams the book shirt and throws it on the floor. Instead of continuing to yell, she just lowers her head. She must really love that manga. Hmm. Natsuki, are you- No! Natsuki's voice squeaks. I see the tears on her face. Uh, I'll help get the crease out, okay? It's my fault, too. Natsuki shakes her head, still looking down. No, I didn't even care that much. I'm just having a really bad day today. Not to be sobs again. I didn't mean to take it out on you. I really didn't mean to. It, it's fine. Is there anything you want to talk about? Natsuki shakes her head. Just every day is so hard. I just want to come to the club and... Natsuki falls on again. I can't press her, so I only do what I know what to do. All right. Well, I'll help clean this up. And I'll move the rest of your manga for you. Uh, I pick up volume two of Parfait Girls. We'll set this one aside. This will help cheer you up a bit, right? We'll get started on it once I'm done here. Natsuki looks up with her glossy eyes. Her lip quivers. You're, you're really nice to me. Eh? That sound came really strange coming from Natsuki. I didn't expect it at all. Well, what do you expect? After all, I love all of you. <clears throat> Natsuki lowers her head and stifles another sob. Not sure what happened to her today, but being nice is the least I could do. My heart feels like something more is happening. I need to take care of her. The next couple minutes are silent between us as... As I begin gathering scattered books, I make sure to slip them into the box in the correct order. After a little bit, Natsuki starts helping. It isn't long before we're done, and I hoist the box onto the shelf where Natsuki wanted to put it. 
Then I grabbed the school and quickly finished moving the rest of the books from the top shelf. All right, that should do it. I hop off the school. Natsuki averts her gaze. No, thanks. Uh, always happy to help my friends. Natsuki is holding a volume of signs I set it in her hands. All right, I'm ready. Good. Even if you weren't, I'd make you anyway. You're taking responsibility for what you said. The thing about cheering me up. Sure thing. We sit in the same spot as last time, and I open the second volume. Natsuki's mood quickly improves, laughing and pointing things out to me. She's surprisingly sharp, making note of several repeated jokes and background elements. In the end, I'm pretty impressed by how everything ties together in this manga. I guess Natsuki had good taste after all. After some time, Monica gets our attention as usual, and it's time to share poems again. Guess I'll be holding on to this one for now. Yep, you can sound more enthusiastic this time. Well, I'm really getting into this manga. He <laughs> told you. Yeah, you were right. I returned to my seat and slipped the book into my bag. Oh man, I kept having to cut in and out unexpectedly. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> You must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Knowing the club wouldn't be here if it, was, if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the new spec for the festival, too. I can't wait for the festival. It's going to be great. Eh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Nasty? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. But it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat and all, eat all kinds of delicious foods. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they have fried squid? Squid? That's very specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean, you of all people? Because it's right in your name, Monica. Huh? That's not how you pronounce my name at all. Actually, that joke, also that joke makes no sense in translation. Huh? Uh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? E. <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me, where is Sayori anyway? Well, her parents picked her up and she had a doctor's appointment to go to. Really? That's strange. She didn't tell any of us about it. I just found out this morning. I wanted to pass the message along to everyone, so it's just us today. The girls decided to work on their own activities. I timidly approached Monica, who was shuffling to some papers at her desk. Well, what's up? It is my son a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? The past few days she's been acting strange. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've, I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Maybe there is something on her mind. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yes, that's why I need to talk to you about. She's always talking to me. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But lately, but lately she was so secretive until I finally discovered it on my own. Sorry, I know it's not your problem, but I think you should know it's the present. No, no, it's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I care about the well-being of my club members, you know. Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Well, she's already gone to the doctor. That's what I need to tell you about. A few days ago, I went to her house because she wasn't ready to school. Lately, she's been coming out later and later, but this time it was really late. I found a... Uh, he's telling her? I found a noose in her desk. Are you sure? Definitely sure. I informed her parents, and she's been feeling a little depressed for a while. Her parents are taking her to a specialist at a local hospital to get screened for depression. I'm shocked. I can't believe our sweet Sayori is suffering. Me neither, but I was lucky to catch her before it was too late. I grabbed Monica's hand. All of you are my friends, which I deeply care for. I'll make darn sure nothing happens to any of you. Well, I'm glad to hear that. You're grabbing onto my hand really tight, you know. <laughs> You're so funny, Will. Whoops. I let go of Monica's hand. Monica smiles meaningfully. Thanks for the talk, Will. You really are kind. I shake around the room and see Yuri is free. Hey, Yuri. Huh? Uh, I suddenly noticed that Yuri's reading yet yeah, another book unlike the one she was reading before. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you again. I know. I was just kind of waiting for you to come. Well, if that's the case, why don't you go ahead and continue where we left off? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow him while she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with the filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this into the teacher's desk, and then I'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have to watch a picture? Thanks, I'll be right back. I might as well walk with you. Th that's okay. You stay here. It won't take long. It better not or else I'm coming after you again. 
Picture in hand, Yuri hurries out of the classroom. I'm back. Thanks for waiting patiently. Wow, that was dang quick. Will, do you like oolong tea? Uh, yeah. Anything's fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Now it's time to hit the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. <laughs> In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Ah, uh, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little tune to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do, when it's you who's around anyway. Ah, uh, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Will. It's very endearing. That's because you're adorable. Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watched Yuri pour a cup of tea for us. Will, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Huh? Why's that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I, I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because of my... Uh, my... Your posture, right? I always hunched over like that while reading. Yes, I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough, I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. I have some chocolate as well. Oh yeah, it's a bag of small chocolate candies. I take it since I'll go with, so, since it'll go well with the tea. Here and I sit against the wall, teacups are our sides. As you can see, we assume the same, the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book, except this time our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Yuri slides together until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. The teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup, holding it with my hand that's not holding the book. I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus, because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears that intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her is fading away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I'm finally relaxed to manage. I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, uh, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, uh, that's that's okay. I won't take any. Are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then I might get smudges on pages. Oh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any of a harder time reading from it, but as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, if that's the case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and plop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book, she simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Huh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did, did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Um, well, sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh, Yuri starts to breathe heavily. I... I can't... Will. Suddenly, Yuri forcefully grabs my arm and jerks me to my feet. My teacup gets knocked over. Will. My heart. My heart won't stop pounding, Will. I can't calm down. I can't focus on anything anymore. Can you feel it, Will? Yuri suddenly presses my hand against her stomach. Why is this happening to me? I don't know chocolate. I didn't know how chocolate had this effect on you. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Are you Are you okay? I can't make it stop. Is everything okay? We can go to the nurse. It makes me even not want to read. I just want to look at you. Huh. You have pretty eyes. Huh. Huh. Um, it's time to share poems. Okay, you three, we're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out- Hold on a second, is it just me, or you said something strange just now, eh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You, devi you deviate from the usual catchphrase when addressing the club. Catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez, why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Uh, stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah, uh, it seems like you're right. Huh, <sighs> Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off when she's not around. 
nasty, but you show some decency. Oh, come on. I noticed how Will has been getting all lovey-dovey with everyone. So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Oh, no, you guys caught me. Huh? That curious expression coming from Yuri? Calm down, guys. Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. We already know that Friday is off due to an in-service day. I already know what I'm doing. That's right, Natsuki will be making cupcakes. But we need a lot of them, and different flavors. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. So Yuri will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri... Yuri, you can... Uh, um... Guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I, I'm useless. No, that's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. N now Natsuki's pounding too. Geez, I can even tell now. I guess I never gave Sayori enough credit, but I can already tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Ah, that may be the case. But, I can all, but if I can't be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know. So you should make some banners and help s do them to help set up the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that, I, I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression changes, and she stares at the desk and starts nod. She stares and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Will. Oh yeah, the one who is truly useless. <laughs> Don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It'll be a long to get. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I'll be really appreciative of that. Uh, that's... Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with my, one of my club members? Uh, I, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. But even if you don't know how to think, there's always some dirty work I could give you. It's not like Monica's gonna give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you like to handle baking on your own. Will may not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance, so therefore, he may be more as suited to assisting with decorations. Hold on, I never said that! How hard can it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds like you're just making excuses for Will to- What are you saying? It will be extremely meticulous work, and baking isn't. Guess what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Will to decide how he's like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in- You literally just said, I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying though, geez, can we just sell this already? Yeah. Well, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Ah, oh, of course. Hm. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. But of course I'm going to go with... There's only one option. Well, what's stopping me from helping everyone? It's the weekend after all. I'm free all weekend. I'm willing to help the club and all of you, if you don't mind. What? You can really do that? Yay! Hold on one second. Yeah! Well, how are you going to figure this out anyways? Well, the passion burns with them. Let's do this. We have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off. How about I do a day with each of you? Sounds fair, right? How about Friday I can work with Monica and Sayori on the pamphlets? Saturday I can work with Yuri on the posters, and Sunday I can work with Natsuki on the cupcakes. Why does Mike have to be first? Yeah, well think of it like this. I need to check I need to check on Sayori, and Monica will be able to come with me since they will be spending time together on this. Sunday would be the best day for the cupcakes, too, since, since they will be the freshest for the festival. Oh yeah, I didn't think of that. Sorry. No worries. Then, it's a date. Huh? 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 Oh yes, I did. Okay, everyone, I think that's about it for today. Will came up with a good plan for us meeting together. Don't, for, don't forget your day and to give him your phone number. Monica hands me her phone number and winks. See you tomorrow. Monica leaves the class. Um, where are you going? Natsuki pulls me over to the side. We still need to figure out our plans. You literally wouldn't have gotten home and realized that you didn't even have a way to contact me. Oh, that's true. I had no idea how that slipped my mind. Geez, good thing I stopped you. I'm giving you my number, okay? You better not make it weird or anything. Why would I do that? Hmm. Natsuki gives me her number. Okay, I'm coming over on Sunday. I'll bring all the ingredients. Wait, you're coming to my house? Well, yeah. What's wrong with that? I mean... I guess for since I'm the one helping, I should be going to your house. Yeah, right. Like, I, I could have a guy over at my house. My dad would kill me. Really? That's kind of strict if you ask me. Yeah, how do you think I feel? I, don't, I can't do anything if my dad is home. Anyway, I just need to complain for a second. We have each other's numbers now. That's all I need from you. I guess I'll text you when I'm coming over. Alright, fine by me. I'll be home all day. Yeah, I'm really going to show you why I love baking so much. So you better look forward to it. You know dang well I will. But didn't you say you were just going to give me the dirty work? Well, 
I was just saying that. It's not like I, I could act like in front of everyone that I was looking forward to this. Wait, really? Well, kind of. Just because I never got to bake with someone else before. That makes two of us. That's all it is, so let's make some sweet, sweet baking on Sunday. See you on Sunday. Ah. Never mind. Nasty heads out of class. I get yanked by the back of my jacket. Hum. I turn around. Sorry. I realize that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yes. Alright then, you're in I exchange phone numbers. Th th this is the most number of girls I will ever have my, my, in my phone ever. I cherish this moment. Okay, that means I will be stopping by your house on Saturday. Eh, my house? Seems like everyone wants to come over to my place. Is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought that since I would be the one going to your house, since I'm the one helping you. I guess that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I think I'll prefer going to your house. Alright. In that case, it wouldn't be a problem. I decided not to press Yuri for a reason. It's not like it should matter that much either way, so I'll need to make sure my room is clean. I hope I make myself man- I hope I manage to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Will. I think it will make a very productive team. Even if you only chose me because you felt bad or something. What do you mean? You don't actually think that, do you? I picked all of you since I wanted to be with everyone. It's difficult for me to come up with any other reason why you have chosen me at all. You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I wanted to do. But Yuri thinks to herself with an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you're kind of overthinking this. You wanted me to point out when you're overthinking, right? Huh? I didn't realize. I'm telling you I want to. That pre that's pretty much all there is to it. You believe me, right? I... Yuri thinks really hard again. She looked straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As if it took her tremendous effort, Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Saturday. Yeah, I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out of the door and Yuri follows. Time to head home. I hope Sayori is doing okay. Sayori. My phone rings. Hello? It's Sayori. Hey, Will. I'm still at the hospital. Somehow my parents know I've been depressed and I'm going through all sorts of tests now. She lets out a sigh. The doctor called, told me I have to start taking a medicine called... Fluoroxetine every day. I'll tell you more tomorrow once we finish the test. I, I tell her about the plans that are going on this weekend. Hee <laughs> hee, you're gonna be really busy having girls come over to your house this weekend. You better not have any dirty thoughts. You better not have any dirty thoughts. Too late. I try to change the subject. Er, don't forget there's no school tomorrow. You and Monica are coming over to my place to work on pamphlets, got it? Got it, I'll bring my laptop and some supplies. That's great, I got a printer at home and some thick cardstock for the pamphlets. See you tomorrow, Will. Take care, Sayori. I hang up the phone. I head inside my house. I'm glad Sayori is doing okay. I clean up my ho I clean up my house, have some dinner, and head to bed. Tomorrow is going to be another busy day. I need to give you something. She may not trust you. If you give this to her, she may not believe you. Do not lie to her, to them. What? What is that? I wake up my, at my desk. 